Hi everyone, this is Manas and today we'll be discussing area of bounded regions. This topic is in fact an application of integration. So let's take up a problem and see how this works. So here is the problem which says find the area bounded by the lines y equals to 2x minus 3, x is equal to 2, x is equal to 5 and x axis using integration and verify the same using basic geometric area formula. Alright, so we're going to divide this solution into two parts. Part 1 is going to be all about sketching and in the second part we will do the calculation for area. So let's sketch. Fine. So we have an x axis, we have an y axis. Now this over here, this intersection point of x and y axis is what you call the origin. Towards the right you have the positive x, towards its left you have the negative x. Above this origin you have the positive y, below you have the negative y. Alright, so let's uh, do the marking and all of them are 1 cm apart you need to make sure that it is a unit distance alright so let's write them down this is the positive x and over here we are going to have the negative x something like this and let's do the marking for y axis okay so 1 2 3 4 and so on let's do the marking now for the negative y axis so this over here is the negative y axis so we're gonna kick off this session by drawing the sketch of this line y is equal to 2x minus 3 so let's write it down y equals to 2x minus 3 now this line in fact is uh, resembles perfectly the slope intercept form which says that y is equal to mx plus c where m represents the slope okay and c is for y intercept now let's understand what m is and what c is with the help of a simple figure here it is you can see clearly this line over here now this line over here is making a certain angle with this positive x axis you can clearly see that the angle made is theta okay and slope is represented by tan theta slope is m where m is equal to tan theta if we can see this triangle over here this is what you call the change in y and this is what you call change in x so this is delta y and this is delta x so m is equivalent to delta y upon delta x change in y upon change in x and as far as this intercept is concerned guys uh, now you can clearly see that this line is intersecting the y axis somewhere here okay and the distance of this intersection point from this origin is what you call the y intercept now this distance could be below the origin or this distance could either be above the origin depending upon the position of the line itself all right so let's move ahead so now we'll make a comparison between this y equals 2x minus 3 and y is equal to mx plus c and on comparing you're going to realize that the value of m works out as 2 and the value of c works out as minus 3 okay now let's start with this intercept now see the value of y intercept is minus 3 so we're going to start from this point over here all right something like this you can see a red dot over here all right now the value of m is equal to 2 and i've just explained it to you what m is m is nothing but the change in y with respect to the change in x and m is equal to 2 so you can also write this as 2 over 1 so that delta y corresponds to 2 units and delta x corresponds to 1 unit so what we'll do right now is we're gonna go two steps above since it's a positive 2 all right so we'll go two steps 1 2 we'll make a dot over here fine then we have delta x is equal to 1 then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move towards the right hand side by an amount of 1 unit so it would be something like this and finally let's make a dot over here okay so this was the starting point and this was the ending point let's join both of them with the help of a nine and now what we're gonna do is we'll put a scale over here and then extend this line in this direction so that's what you call y equals to 2x minus 3's graph okay fine so we have this y equals to 2x minus 3 now let's work out this guy x is equal to 2 so x is equal to 0 is nothing but the y axis x is equal to 1 is going to be a line an absolutely vertical line passing through this one point and hence x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 5 are going to be a lines passing through point 2 and passing through point 5 vertical lines right so let's plot them immediately something like this x is equal to 2 passing through this point and then we we're going to have x is equal to 5 passing through this 5 point so that's x is equal to 5 now you can clearly see guys uh, this point this line over here y equals to 2x minus 3 this is x is equal to 2 and this is x is equal to 5 and finally we have this x axis this is the region bounded by these lines and the x axis let us color it so this is the region for which we need to calculate the area and in the next part i'm going to show you how this can be done with the help of integration so, alright guys, so we have a function y is equal to f of x and this function is continuous for a specific range. Let's say 
this, this function is continuous for x equals to a to x equals p. All right. Then the area bounded by this curve f of x, these two lines x equals to a, x equals to b and the x-axis, this area I'm talking about can be given by this formula integral of a to b y dot dx and we're going to be using this formula to compute the value of area. So let's write it down and we have this integral of from this is x is equal to a, this is x is equal to b, this is 2 and this is going to be 5 and y, value of y has been given as 2x minus 3 2x minus 3 dot dx alright now let's open this up and what we'll see is 2 times of integral 2 to 5 x dx minus 3 times of integral dx now if there is nothing you can write it as x to the power 0 nothing means 1 and 1 is equivalent to x to the power 0 in fact now the integral of x is going to be x square upon 2 you have this formula x to the power um, n integral of x to the power n dx is equal to x to the power n plus 1 upon n plus 1 so we are using this formula and it's going to be from 2 to 5 all right minus 3 times of x to the power 0 plus 1 upon 0 plus 1 so that is going to work out as simply x and it's going to be again 2 to 5 now 2 and 2 cancel out 5 square is 25 minus this putting this lower limit is going to be 2 square is 4 minus 3 again we have 5 minus 2 and it is going to work out as 21 minus 3 times of 5 minus 2 is 3 and 3 times of 3 is 9 so it's going to work out as 12 square units all right guys so this is the value that we've got via integration all right integrating right now let's say we have this all right let's say that this figure is 1 this is 2 1 corresponds to a triangle and 2 corresponds to a rectangle and what we're going to do is we'll join these two, two things to compute the total area and it's going to work out as area a1 plus a2 the total area of this overall figure so how can that be done if you see clearly that this base over here now this is going to work out as 2 and this is going to work out as 5 and 5 minus 2 will give you this value as 3 all right similarly we have this over here this is going to be 1 and this is obviously you know this this is going to be 7 all right so 7 minus 1 this is going to work out as um, let me see this this is going to work out as 6 all right so we have this area of triangle as a1 fine so you can write this half of base base is going to be this base is 3 in fact into height height is 6 and plus we have the rectangle area also so this base of rectangle is 3 this is 1 let's write this as 3 into 1 so this is going to 3 2 3 is 6 3 3 is 9 9 plus 3 will give you the value as 12 so this is 12 square units using simple formulae and this is 12 square units using integration so guys that was all from my side and this question in fact is a conglomeration of coordinate geometry of simple basic geometrical formulas of integration and i hope that you have learned a lot in this video so guys this is manas patnak signing off have a great day and take care